All right, AconNews.com would like to welcome in the five-time world champ, Zeb Super Judah. Zeb, what's up, man? Oh, man, ain't nothing, man. It's cool. Now, it's playing a little basketball today. That's it. That's what's up. Doing a little hoop, staying in shape. Plus, you're in the middle of this Vernon, uh, this uh, training camp for Vernon Paris. Talk about it. How's it going so far? Training camp is going excellent. <laughs> give me some, give me some more on that, Zeb. Though. I mean, how you feeling? I uh, know. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. You know, what I'm saying training camp is going good. We got some good work. So, you know, everything's positive. Now, have you had a chance to study this guy, Vernon Paris, much? Uh, if so, what, what's he do? What's he do well? What's he do not so well? Um, you know, I don't really study fighters, you know what I'm saying? Right now, at this point of my career, what I do is prepare myself. I prepare myself mentally and physically for the uh, opportunity of, of, you know, of a hand, you know. And the opportunity of a, of a hand is a chance for me to become a six-time champ of the world again. And that's what I'm more focused on. And it's, uh, this fight against Paris is a, is a IBF eliminator fight. Which means, I guess, whoever wins between Lamont Peterson and Amir Khan is who you'll who you'll get. Um, talk about each of those guys. Of course, we saw the the, the, the first fight with Amir Khan, but how, how, do you, how does it break down for you with those two guys? The matchup. Um, yeah, I think you know they're both two good, young, excellent fighters. You know, I have a uh, history with uh, Lamont Peterson. You know, he's a good friend of mine, also. And uh, you know, Amir Khan. You know, I was in the ring with him. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So. Uh, you know, I'm pretty much, uh, pretty much, uh, watching these guys for years and understanding, you know what I'm saying, what they be doing, you know what I'm saying, and, um, mm -hmm. that's it, you know what I'm saying, so. How does a fighter mentally gear up for a guy to fight somebody that they like? Because if you and Lamont go back to, from the prize fight days, with prize fight promotions, and maybe even before that, Lamont's a great kid, too, so how do you, how do you gear yourself up to fight someone that you genuinely care about? You know what? Um, as it stands right now, you know, you know, um, I wish him well. He is a champion, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for him and uh, you know, Barry and those guys that you know get the opportunity to become a champion of the world and you know make some great money. I mean, that's the name of the, the name of the mm -hmm. game. Um, you know, you know, as far as me setting my sights on Lamont Peterson, I have not. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, that, that, that's a good friend of mine. I wish him well. You know, I mean, when he was when he was there and fought Victor Cayo. You know, I was there, I was there with him, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, in this name of the, I mean, in this part of the game that we're in now, you know, uh, you know, Ali, Ali went to say, you know what I'm saying? And, and his down point correct is, well, you know what? If you're my friend, then fight me. Let's make money. Let, let's do it. I mean, this mm. is what we do. So I don't think it would be a problem for me and Mark Peterson if the opportunity shift presents itself for us to fight each other. That's a good point. Um, all right, looking back at your, your, your first fight with Amir Khan, when you look back at that fight, what, what, do you think, what do you think went wrong? What do you think you would do differently if, if it is Amir Khan you fight next? Uh, um, it's a whole different game plan. It's a whole different uh, situation at hand. And, uh, you know, um, I don't want to give it away. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to give it away, but, um, yeah, you know, it's the opportunity and Amir Khan should come back and, you know, he should defeat the Mark Peterson, then, you know, I'll be 100% ready, ready for, him, for him, too. Which, you know what I'm saying, not that I'm, you know, everyone knows I want to fight uh, uh, Kyle, but, you know, he has to get past America, I mean, uh, Lamar Peterson first, and that's not an easy task. Which is a good segue to my next question, because I was going to ask you, if you had a preference, knowing you and that Brooklyn blood of yours, you, I'm guessing you'd want some get back against Amir Khan as opposed oh, to Lamar Peterson, right? Now, getting back to Vernon Paris, your, your opponent coming up on March 24th, he's fought some decent competition, but he hasn't fought, in my opinion, any elite level fighters like you. Um, do you feel when, that? When, it, you say, when you say decent competition, who do you fight besides Tim Coleman? I mean, right, right. To me, I hate Tim Coleman is 
only if can only step up in in, in competition yeah. he's ever been. And you know, face you know, not to disrespect Tim Coleman, but you know, he's never been a world champion. You know what I'm saying? He's never had an opportunity to step in in the ring before mm-hmm. those big lights, you know what I'm saying? And and, and and you know, and perform at a high level of, of, of championship boxing. You know what I mean? So when you when you say, you know, who did uh Bernard Fast fight, I mean, you know, 23 of his fights came in, in his hometown. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I mean, you know, not to take anything away from the kid, the kid worked his way up to get what he got, and hey, you know what I'm saying? March 24th, we're going to find out. Yeah, I was just being respectful to to his opponents, but you're right though. He hasn't, yeah. he hasn't, he hasn't come close to fighting anybody near near your level. That's for sure. Um, yeah. Do Do you feel that he's he's going to really be on the most A game he can possibly be though? Because obviously beating a Zab Judah does does everything for his career. Well, I would hope so. I would hope so. I would hope so that he's at his hundred percent marker because I will be. And you know, so that people understand and that know me for years, know that when, when my back against the wall, opportunities like this presents itself again. I mean, I mean, come on, you gotta admit, you know, before the con fight, they written me off. After the con fight, they written me off. So come on, and God put me right back. So you know, what I'm saying the only standpoint thing that I can tell any fighter or anybody out there is, you know, nobody can ever say when you're done. God has uh, the, the, you know, the the last say. So the say, all right. Mm-hmm. You're 100% done. Roy Jones Jr. is a very good friend of mine. I talk to Roy frequently. He has the same mindset, the same exact. That's exactly what he says. You know, it's yeah, over you know, God mean, says it's no, over with. No matter what nobody says, you know what I'm saying? Man, man can't predict another man's future. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you exactly. know what I'm saying? So that, 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 that's not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So when people, you know, people make opinions, you know. You know what I'm saying? Excuse my French, but opinions are like assholes. Everybody got one. Exactly. You know? <laughs> you know, you 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 um. Of course, you have you have some haters, like most successful people in, in life do. But you also have a, a very solid, hardcore following of fans too, Zab. And one of one of your fans on Facebook hit me up. He was all excited when he found out that I was going to interview you, and he's really happy how you interact with your fans on your Twitter and Facebook. Man, talk about that a little bit. Oh, you know what? I I just believe in uh, you know. I just believe in, you know, if you're going to be on these uh, multimedia sites, you know what I'm saying, why not, why not represent yourself, you know what I mean? I've been approached a lot of times with these uh, different companies coming and run my website and, you know, run, run, you know, run, run my Twitter page and my Facebook and they promise me all these followers. Well, I don't need all of that. I don't need two, three million followers, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, I need a genuine, uh, a fan that genuinely likes that mm-hmm. shooter. And if it should be, you know, the 40, 50,000 fans that I got now, I mean, hey, I'm okay with that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we have a lot of fun on Twitter. We have a lot of fun on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we talk about boxing. You know what I'm saying? I, I spread my word that I learned about God. I spread it with my fans. And, you know, I mean, you know, everybody's, everybody doesn't like it. But, hey, you know what I'm saying? The ones that do like it, you know what I'm saying? I mean, God bless them and we keep, and we keep moving on. The ones, the, ones, the ones that don't, you know, you can hit the meat and not follow me no more. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> as easy as that, man. So, look, do me a favor. Give a shout out to one of your your biggest fans out there. His name is Caleb, and he lives in Brazil. He's from Brazil. He wanted me to give you uh, give a shout out to you. What's his name? What's his name? Caleb. Oh yeah, that's my boy on Facebook, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, Caleb. Is that Caleb? Caleb, K L L E B, Caleb. Oh, Caleb. All right. Yo, what's up? Yo, it's your boy Zab Super Judah. Give a shout out to my boy Caleb. You, you know, go. thank you for the love, the follow on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? All the love on Facebook. You know, it's all love back. Appreciate it. One day when I come over to Brazil, I look you up and we have a good time. That's what's up, man. Now let's talk about the gym that the Judas got going on in Brooklyn, New York. What's cooking in Brooklyn over there with the gym? Oh yeah, the gym is doing phenomenal right now, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, God bless her with the opportunity of giving back and uh you know, going in there and start up a you know, a, a organization that Brooklyn, you know, so much need, you know what I'm saying? I mean you, you have a lot of great talent coming out of Brooklyn, you know, you know, a lot of these kids don't have the opportunity or nowhere to go start up to even get to the position that some of them are 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 in hey Zach, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Or um, don't even uh they don't have the opportunity to, of of getting to uh, where they at now. And so, you know, my dad is, a, you know, my dad is a person that loves boxing. Man. He loves boxing with all his heart. And, uh, you know, he, you know, he, he opened up a gym, the Junior Brothers Boxing Gym. And, you know, you can go over there, 400 Liberty Avenue. You know, it's over in the uh, East New York section of Brooklyn. Right, you 
you know, right, right, right off of Pennsylvania and Atlantic Avenue, and I mean, it's a phenomenal gym. I mean, one mm-hmm. thing about it, you know, my dad is there every day, hands on, and you know, him and his partner Greg, and you know, what I'm saying, I mean, they have a lot of, they have a lot of good, a lot, a, a lot of good time in there. You know, a lot, a lot of fans may or may not know that your dad not only is he a great trainer, he's also a former world champion kickboxer. So they'd be getting oh, yeah. top of the line six training. Times, six yeah. Times of the world. yeah, that's crazy, man. That's that's some good stuff. Yeah. You know, I talked to the late Angelo Dundee, you know, last year and he and he said something about about when people open up gyms, especially in, in, in you know, the tough areas and the bad areas and or wherever, but it's actually a lifesaver. It's actually saving kids' lives to open up boxing gyms. Very much so because, you know, a lot of times these young kids, they don't have nothing to look forward to once they get out of school. You know what I'm saying? They, mm-hmm. they got to look forward to the local hustlers and, the, you know, and the, and the drug dealing stuff that's, that's at hand. You know what I'm saying? And hold on a second. Don't yep. do that. You hear me? Don't do that. You all right, champ? Yeah. Hey, get up. Come on. <laughs> my stupid dog. I got a boxer. He's not my son down. Oh, man. The dog did? <laughs> Yeah, the dog's other one, you know, with his two paws and knocked him down. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, and so, yeah, you know, I mean, these young kids, they don't have, uh, they don't have, uh, you know, nothing to look forward to once they get out of school and stuff. So, you know what I'm saying? You know, with people opening gyms up in, you know, poverty struck environments is great. You know, even in, even in good environments, it's still great. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, every, everyone knows, you know, an idle mind is a devil's playground. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, once these kids have nothing to do and, they, and, and, you know, their mind is just wandering, man, they get into all kind of trouble, man. I mean, I know because I was a young kid out there, and, uh, you know, my dad saved us, you know, with, with the sport of boxing. You know what I'm saying? After, right. after school, we knew we had to look forward to going to the gym. Why? We knew we had a tournament coming up, and we wanted to win, and we wanted, and we wanted to, be the, to be the best. I mean, for those of y'all that, that don't know about my amateur career was, you know, I'm a three-time Golden Glove Gold champion, and... Multiple champions of every tournament in New York City. I've never lost a fight in New York City ever. Wow! And, and I, I, I have a hundred and ten. I was a hundred and ten and five as a, as an amateur. But in New York City, I've never lost a. I've never lost a fight. I've, I've everything. Metros, Empire State Games, Silver Gloves, Golden Gloves, everything. I've, I won everything. Multiple weight classes. I mean, you know, we had a lot of fun though. You, you, you know, you mm-hmm. know, what I'm saying myself and uh. One of the guys that, that, uh, that runs USA Boxing in New York today, uh, Brian Adams, you know, he's another good friend of mine. He was, he was good people with too. He was also a phenomenal fighter too. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, man, we had a, we, you know, you know what I'm saying? But the game is, the game is good. You know, even Brian gives back his time. Yes, champ. No, you can't, you can't go over there. And even Brian gives back his time right now and, then, you know, he runs the USA Amateur Boxing today in New York City, and you know we, you know the Judy Brothers, we gave back a boxing gym and you know a house and environment for young kids to come in there and learn the sport of boxing in a decent, a decent uh, state of mind. You know that's great stuff, man. I'm glad the Judas are giving back like that. Really good stuff, Zab. Uh, before I let you go, let me get a couple, couple, um, couple more things. I want to get your thoughts off, off of your career for a minute. And touch on the Floyd Mayweather uh, Miguel Cotto fight and the Manny Pacquiao Timothy Bradley fight. How do you see both of those fights turn out? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I think in those fights, uh, they're going to be, you, know, you got uh, action packed dynamite fighters. You know what I'm saying? You know, Miguel Cotto, which is a strong, you know, uh, come forward, powerful puncher. You got Floyd Mayweather, which is one of the slickest. Boxes in boxing, you know what I'm saying, which is a hard worker, one of the hardest workers in boxing. Uh, you know, you got uh, Manny Pacquiao, who's came and devastated the game of boxing in his last couple of years, and you know he's fat with his speed and, and, and his power. Timothy Bradley was another hard working dynamite uh, fighter, you know what I mean? So, you know, myself, you know, at, 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 at both of those events, I'll be ringside, I'll be sitting there, I'll be number one in the world at 140 pounds at that time. At the time, place when both of these fights take place, so you know I'll be just sitting there, just holding, holding down, and enjoying a great night of boxing. A lot of legends up there, man. All right, last thing, uh, Zeb. When you look back at your career, when you finally do hang up the gloves one day, how do you want the fans to most re- remember uh, Zeb Judah? I don't know. Just know me as a fighter, as you know, never ducked nobody. For all the best that was out there, you know, had a lot of mishaps 
in his career, had a lot of great days. You know, one thing about my career that I love is that I had more great days than bad days. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if it was a, if it was the other way around, I would be sad with my career. But you know, with my career with 50, with 53 fights and seven losses, five world championships, <laughs> three different weight classes. I mean, come on. I mean, I had a, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> Zab is not crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Zab, you know, it's not crazy. It's not, it's not crazy at all to cons- for you to be considered f- for the Hall of Fame. I, I see you as a Hall of Famer. I- I know, I know. People, 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 people say that, you know what I mean? But, you know, when you speak in Hall of Fame, you speak in Muhammad Ali, you speak in Mike Tyson, you speak in Fernando, you speak in you speak in legends, you know what I'm saying? So, you, well, know, you know, with a humble, with a humble mind and a humble aspect, you know, I just look at, hey, if, if, if God should bless me with that opportunity, uh, man, I'll be very grateful for it. And, you know, I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? But, like I said, boxing has been great to me. You know, I've been great to boxing. I just want the fans to know that you just stood up. She had dynamite speed. Excellent power, and when he was ready to show up, he showed up. Ain't no doubt. Zab, give me some closing thoughts for all the Zab Judah fans and what they can expect on March 24th. March 24th, you want to start some fireworks, you know what I'm saying? You got a young, a young, uh, hungry fighter coming in here with the, you know, by the, by the name of Vernon Iceman Paris, you know. He's coming in, he's coming into Brooklyn. Yes, champ. Okay, you basically have to hold on. <laughs> so, yeah. I love it, man. He's, he's, he's just turned three years old. Uh, he had a party yesterday. He turned three years old, uh, January, I mean, February 17th. That's what's up, that's all. Awesome. You know? So, uh, yeah, I just want, uh, you know, March 24th, you know, we got a young fighter, a young hungry lion coming in there with the name of Vernon Iceman Paris, you know what I'm saying? He's coming in there to set his mark in boxing, you know, at the age of 24, I think that, you know, that's, uh, that's excellent and all, but I think that, you know, timing, timing is a key for everything, you know what I'm saying? And I think that, uh, you know, he will succeed one day and be, the, and be one of the best fighters out there or, or go out there, but just right now, it's not the time. You know what I'm saying? And especially going up against a, a hungry, determined, seasoned, polished veteran. <laughs> My name is Zab Superhuman. All right, Zab. I appreciate your time, man. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, man. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it.